A prominent Russian propagandist has become the latest pro-Putin figurehead to express a desire for Alaska to be under Russian control again, raising fears that the country could make a land grab for the US state. Presenter of Russia One program 60 Minutes and Putin mouthpiece Olga Skabayeva referred to the US state as our Alaska during a broadcast. Newsweek says that Alaska once belonged to Russia. In 1867, it was sold to the US after then-President Andrew Johnson signed the Alaska Treaty. It gained the status of a state on January 3, 1959. Alaska and Russia are positioned about 53 miles apart at their closest point. Skabayeva made the remarks after fellow pundit Adalbi Shkargoshev, a deputy of Russia's parliament, the State Duma, commented on a joint patrol staged by Russia and China last week that came within 200 miles of the Alaskan coast. Russian Tu-95Ms and Chinese H-6K strategic bombers, alongside escorting Russian Su-30SM and Su-35S jets, operated together over the North Pacific Ocean and the Bering Sea. It marked the first time the two countries had been intercepted while operating together. Our aircraft approached the borders of Alaska, Shkagoshev said of the joint patrol before he was interrupted by Skabayeva, who incorrectly said that the State Duma deputy had said, Our Alaska. She added, Right now the head of the Pentagon is hiccuping nervously somewhere. You said our Alaska. And he just said that if Russian and Chinese planes penetrate the territory that the US considers its own, the US is ready to enter the war. State TV propagandists, including Skabayeva, have even floated the idea of either striking or seizing the territory of NATO members during Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Moscow has accused the West of being complicit in the war by providing Kyiv with military aid, weapons and equipment to fend off Russian forces. In January, the US State Department responded to a Kremlin decree following claims that Putin gave Russia grounds to reclaim Alaska. The Kremlin signed a decree regarding historic Russian real estate holdings abroad, directing and funding the presidential administration and the foreign ministry in searching for real estate in the Russian Federation, the former Russian Empire, the former USSR. Then, referring to the proper registration of rights and legal protection of this property, Newsweek previously reported. Unrest and street clashes broke out across Venezuela, after the electoral authority announced that Nicolas Maduro had been re-elected for another six-year term as president. Maduro will be serving a third consecutive six-year term, having first taken office in 2013 following the death of President Hugo Chavez. The National Electoral Council announced that with 80% of ballots counted, Maduro had secured more than 51% of the vote, compared to 44% for his main rival, Edmundo Gonzalez. The opposition says the vote was marred by fraud, insisting its candidate Edmundo Gonzalez won the ballot. Some opinion polls ahead of the election showed a clear majority for the challenger. Large numbers of riot police and soldiers were deployed in Caracas to disperse protesters and prevent them from approaching the presidential palace. Crowds of people were seen chanting, Freedom! and calling for the government to fall. Footage showed posters of President Maduro ripped down, while tires, cars and trash were set alight. In a televised address from Caracas, Maduro accused the opposition of attempting to impose a coup d'état in Venezuela. Opposition leaders rejected Maduro's allegations, and called for peaceful protests across the country. As Maduro spoke, demonstrators reportedly tried to block highways, including one that connects the capital with Simon Bolivar International Airport. A number of countries, as well as international bodies including the UN, have called on the Venezuelan authorities to release voting records from individual polling stations. Argentina has refused to recognize Maduro's victory. In response Venezuela has recalled diplomats from Buenos Aires. Diplomats from six other Latin American countries Chile, Costa Rica, Panama, Peru, the Dominican Republic and Uruguay, have also been withdrawn in response to the international outcry. Nine Latin American countries have called for an emergency meeting of the Organization of American States Permanent Council due to concerns over the election results.